Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Sarah Wisted, and today's video, I'm pretty excited to share with you a little experiment that I did recently. I refinished a few vases and just different pottery and sculptural items that I had around my house. I did a vintage thrift shopping haul the other day. Went to Goodwill and a few vintage stores here in Atlanta, so some of the bases were from there. But essentially, I tried out two different methods of refinishing bases, and I noticed that one of them I was not a huge fan of. Of course, I will share that with you guys, um, what it actually was and how to do it, and then why I wasn't a fan. Um, but the other one I actually thought was pretty easy and it turned out really great. So if you like a DIY like that to just refresh some bases or sculptural items that you have in your house, then I feel like this is a perfect video for you. I wanted to take a quick moment to say thank you to Anna Luisa for sponsoring this video. I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about them before because I have worked with them over on Instagram and here on YouTube before. Um, but it's a sustainable jewelry brand and I just absolutely love their pieces and I feel like it's something that's relevant for me to share with you guys as well. Um, but basically, they have all gold-plated gold plated pieces, gold-plated designs. Um, so what that means for you is you don't get the, like you know when your jewelry sometimes tarnishes or when you wear it, when you wash your hands or in water often, you, you tend to get like the black ring wherever that jewelry was sitting. Well, their jewelry doesn't do that, which is amazing, especially now during the pandemic when you're washing your hands a lot or you know just whatever you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. It's really nice to know that your jewelry is not gonna fall apart or just look you know, completely trashed after a few months. So um, yeah, that's one of my favorite things about Ana Luisa, but I will say the new pieces that I just got in, I am in love with. And the first piece is this necklace and it's just a really cool design. I feel like I've been seeing this type of necklace or this type of design everywhere lately, um, but Ana Luisa's take on it, in my opinion, is just a really cool, classic, minimal take. And they just made it very beautiful and very wearable in an everyday situation. Like you could even put it on with just a t-shirt and jeans, like just something so simple and you wanna throw on this necklace to just like add a little something to it. I feel like that would be perfect. Um, they also have this matching bracelet that um, is part of it as well, part of the collection as well. And I just love that you can mat mix and match different pieces, but if you wanted to do a little matching, like sometimes I like to do, um, then it's like perfect because you could have both pieces for your wrist and for your neck. Um, I actually picked up these earrings as well, which are not technically the same design, but it looks like a similar shape. And the reason I picked them up is because I thought it would be cool for all of them to kind of have a similar shape and a similar um, just like look to them. And what I really like about these is they're a little bit chunky and they're still small. So, I mean, you guys know me, I don't wear a ton of like in your face jewelry, um, but just for some reason don't think that that looks the best on me. So I tend to gravitate towards something that isn't gonna take away from the look that I'm putting together, but just help enhance it. The other good news about Ana Luisa is they have a promo code for you guys, and it is, I'll leave it below, but I believe it's just Wisted Sarah 10 and that's for 10% off, and I'll put that link down below as well. But without further ado, I'm going to show you guys these different methods, and then what I liked, what I didn't like, and yeah, that is the video, so stay tuned. But this first technique was pretty simple. I just used some plaster of Paris and there's instructions on how to actually mix up your plaster of Paris right on the box. So I just followed that instruction and did um, just like one serving of that. And then, so basically you add the plaster of Paris with some water and you mix it all up and it forms this like paste type um, texture. And then you just add some dirt to it, so I just got this dirt, honestly, out of one of the pots that I had in one of my house. Um, I didn't want to go outside and get new dirt, so I just grabbed some dirt from a pot that I had. So I threw that in and mixed that up as well. And then once everything was mixed well, I grabbed my pot. These pots that I am putting this plaster on, I have already painted black. I just used a spray paint. 
So all of the pots have a coat of spray paint and then now I'm putting the plaster on the outside. And if you can see, I'm just kind of rubbing it on to the planter. This is the technique that most of the people use that I, when I watch their videos, this is how they did it as well. Um, there's really no wrong, right or wrong way to do it. You just like rub it on and you can rub it lighter in some areas, like heavier in some areas, just to make it look distressed and not perfect. And yeah, that's about it. You just let it dry. And then once I let it dry, I, let, I rubbed it a little bit more to give it even more of a distressed texture and this is how it ended up. Okay guys, so technique number one, the antiquing wasn't my favorite and here's why. So I feel like I'm very picky, I'm very particular about items that I have displayed in my house. I don't have a lot of knickknacks, I don't have a lot of stuff just everywhere. Um, and the stuff that I do want to display and the stuff that I do want out and like seen, I want it to feel intentional. I just want it to feel nice. Like I want the whole house to feel clean and I want the whole house to feel elevated. And this just didn't hit the mark for me. And I don't know if it's because um, user error, I guess, or artist error, however you want to say it. Maybe I just didn't do it the right way. Um, I had seen so many girls and men out there doing this really cool DIY where they would antique their vases and it would look so cool, like almost like a restoration hardware type item. Um, and I will say in pictures, it does kind of look like that, but in real life, it to me just looks kind of messy. Let me show you what I mean. I, I don't even want to pick this up because I feel like it's, um, kind of dusty still. I know you can seal it, but I have not because if I'm being honest, I'm going to paint over it. This is what it looks like, just a close up of it finished. I mean, you can of course distress it some more. You can add more. I saw some people adding like sand to it to just like change the color a bit, make it a little bit more dirty looking. Um, but I, I don't even know if you can see this on camera. It just looks I don't know, it just looks clumpy, it looks undone, unfinished. And like I said, this yeah. very well could be user error on my part, but I just don't love it. For the second technique, I just took some leftover Sherwin-Williams paint. So this is the paint that we use for all the walls in our house. It's Sherwin-Williams alabaster and satin finish. So because I had this leftover paint, I just wanted to use this instead of going out and buying new paint. You can use white paint, you can use whatever color paint that you want. I just went with white because of course I like a neutral color, so that's why we went with white. And then I put in some baking soda. There's no exact formula for this. I just kept adding baking soda until it looked like a texture. So it looked a little bit clumpy, a little bit more thick, kind of like a paste, but not quite. Um, I feel like if you're going for more of a textured look at the end like when the paint dries if you want it to look more like a stone or a concrete you can add more baking soda um, but if you want it to be more smooth but still have like the chalky finish you can add less so it's not really an exact science it's just kind of what your preference is that paint and baking soda combination i just started painting my vase I did do two or three coats, so I think I did three coats on the inside where it was green, and then I just did two on the outside where it was white. Because it was already white, it covered pretty easily. Um, so you can do as many coats as you need to get a full coverage. Um, of course, white going over a darker color, you might need more coats versus if you're doing a dark color over light. I then wanted to try it on this really interesting I don't know, let's call it an object. Um, so it's basically this acrylic piece that had really cool texture to begin with, but I just wanted to paint it because it's not that cool when it's just clear like this. So I wanted to see what it would look like with some paint since I'd seen some really cool objects that looked similar to this on Pinterest. So I just painted this one. Um, this one I did had to have to get out a smaller paintbrush to go um, in between those small little folds that ha this item had. So this one did take a little bit more of my patience, but it ended up turning out really, really great. So I'm really happy with this one as well. For this second method, I am actually a fan of. I feel like it is a great option if you have 
a really cool shape, like say you love a vase shape, but you just don't love the color, this is an amazing option for that. So for me, I actually had a few vases that I just wanted to paint white and just make them just very neutral and just something that I could have just like out on a stack of books or something like that. So um, I'll show you this vase first. So I originally got this at a vintage store here in Atlanta called Atlanta Used Furniture. And it was, it was white, but um, it was like an off-white, almost like a creamy yellow undertone white, um, which is fine, but I just wanted it to be like a bright white, and the inside was green, so I painted that white as well. And the best part about this is the texture on the outside. It almost looks like stone, and it's going to be really hard for you guys to see through the camera, but it almost looks like a concrete or like a stone, like a white stone which I think is so cool, so easy to do. Like I think anyone could do it. Didn't take a lot of effort, it didn't take a lot of thought. I didn't have to get my hands all dirty with all the um, different plaster or whatever. It was just simple, so love that. And I wanted to show you one more piece. I wanna show you guys this piece as well. It's the same exact technique, um, but it was on this acrylic like sculpture almost. like. I don't know how to explain it, it's like an acrylic little thing, it's a little art piece, right? So I still need to put another coat on the inside of this because you can see the streaks. Oh, Hobbs is coming in here, hold on. Okay, so back to this. So I just thought it was like a really cool shape. It was, it is like, it was like a plasticky, they called it acrylic, but it's like pretty much plastic. But I thought it would be really cool painted because when it was clear it wasn't that cool. But I really love what it looks like painted. And I think this sitting on a stack of books could be a really cool piece for a very inexpensive project. I hope you guys don't mind Hobbs is just going to be in here. But I'm done with this video anyway. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. That was it as mentioned. Um, I wanted to quickly remind you guys, Anna Luisa is having that 10% off and I will again leave that code below. So make sure you check out their pieces. And yeah, this was the end of the video and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe to my channel and leave a comment down below. I do want to know before I sign off, what, so number one, have you tried these two techniques? And number two, Oh, this might be a three-pronged question, so this might be asking a lot of you, but number one, have you tried any of these techniques? Number two, did you like them? And then number three, what could I have done differently on the one that I didn't like? Because, like I said, just not a fan, and I probably will not be using that technique ever again. But like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'm sure I'll talk to you on my next video.